Hey everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. First of all, I probably need to have my head checked. <laughs> I've had um, several requests to show a tutorial on these. Um, they're the Mod Melt Molds. Mod Podge. Mod Molds. <laughs> They're made to, you know, use with the hot glue type sticks. But you can use them for polymer clay, for resin. They're flexible silicone. These ones in particular can go in the oven. I also got the steampunk something or other. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> Do they even have names? It's called Industrial. And the other one is called Gems. This is the one that I initially bought. Alright, and then I also received this... Um, I believe it's a Sculpey mold of the faces. This particular one is not heat safe. I don't believe. <clears throat> so I have played with these <laughs> and done just about every combination that I could think of. And I'm sure that you'll let me know if I forgot one. <laughs> Everything from resin this actually has polymer clay bands in it. This one has two different sizes of uh, glitter. The Martha Stewart leaf glitter and then just some ultra fine glitter, micro fine glitter. This one's the faces. Just to show you a few. This one has gold leafing in it. It's actually the Cosmic Shimmers uh, uh -huh. flakes, gilding flakes. And I got these from Tupelo Designs LLC. Um, this one is from the Steampunk one. And it's got the UV resin in it. And then I embossed on the back of it. With. I believe that's the Ranger Rust. This one's got a bronze on it. Embossing powder. This one has a gold. and the silver. And I could have embossed them on the front just as easily. Alright. Then going from the, the UV resin to the polymer clay. These are just some of the faces that I molded in the polymer clay. And as you can see, there's still glitter in there. From uh, doing the resin. I didn't wipe out the molds in between with alcohol or anything like that. I was just playing around. <clears throat> then I got a little more serious. Alright, and this is just a mix that I already had made up. These have not been sanded, buffed, glazed, nothing. Just straight out of the mold. And this one was the same mix with a little bit of gold leafing in it. Same with this one. And then this was just some of the black. I believe it's called Twinkle Twinkle. Primo Clay. And I did several of the different molds in that one. 
this one has actually been glazed. Going back to the resin, this one was a transparent resin moon face that I backed with black clay that I had put uh, mm -hmm, gold flakes on. And as you can see, it's come, come undone. Need some need some glue and then this one was a silver same thing alright then going down I did the little tiny small ones these were some black black clay that I did some uh, uh -huh. foiling on but I layered the foil between the black and the transparent and gradiated it down from red to blue and so this was the halfway it'll be a lot prettier when it has glaze on it so I did several of those one all right and then I did a lapis mix and I did three of those this again was just some leftover um, color that I had done another piece off of this one hasn't even been trimmed and this was just white clay with the silver foil on it it was a leftover piece from the holidays and I hope everybody had a great Christmas I know we did this also was a leftover piece from another uh, stone that I had done I love that That was enough to do two of those. Again, another leftover piece. This will be really pretty when it's glazed. A pretty little ombre piece. Again, with just some clay that I had already mixed up scrap clay and then let me see if I can just move my paper down uh, well sort of these pieces were made with alcohol inks this one was the same as this except for I only had a tiny piece of this ombre color left and I mixed it with transparent sorry with transparent clay so it really is a lot more pink than it looks on camera this again was some scrap clay that I'd had and so is this one and then this row is all alcohol inks I've gotten some alcohol inks right before the holidays this one's called citrus and I believe that's this one and it's actually the citrus and the lettuce mixed together these should be really pretty when they're when they're glazed this one is the one that's called pond and these don't have any glitter in them or anything it's just transparent clay and alcohol in it. 
believe this one's the, no, this one's the orange. This one is the watermelon. And then this one is the yellow. A little placking in my transparent clay where I didn't work it enough. And then these are foil. Some of them are the foil from the dollar store that I talked about before. And the rest of them are nail art foil. And this is nothing new. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people have done this. And these have been glazed. And it doesn't always turn out 100% perfect, and that's part of the charm of it. So, like I said, this is what I've done so far. <laughs> My bead box was almost empty, by the way, so it will now be full, or close to it. So these are the ones that I'm doing now. These have not gone in the oven yet. A little Makumigane oh, technique. Alright. So, as soon as I move this mess out of the way, Okay, all I've got here is some layers of some red Primo glitter, Primo accents, some white Primo accents glitter, I believe it's called frost, frost white glitter, and then just a little bit of Sculpey, three in the Dusty Rose. Alright, so I've taken the white, um, the white and pink mixed a little, the white and red mixed a little, the pink and red mixed a little, and the red, and layered them up. Alright, now I'm going to take just, just whatever. and cut down into it. With some different shapes. And it doesn't matter if it cuts it apart. Doesn't matter if you get it back together right. Just make a mess in it. Alright, you 
can see I've made a mess in it. And then I'm going to try to kind of connect it back together. Just smush it. And you can take your roller. Roll on it top and bottom a little bit. Alright, so we've kind of manipulated it a bit. Then I'm going to take my tissue blade. And this would be easier if I was working on my glass. And you can see some of the effects that you'll get. Alright, so we're going to take this piece. And this is all we're going to do, is just mash it in there. Just want to make sure you get all your air bubbles out. And then I'm going to start folding the edge back a little bit. Yeah. And I'm just going to take my blade and keeping it flat. Cut the back off. And that's just so you don't have to trim it up later. And where you cut the back off, it also has a nice pattern that you could use in another piece. Alright. What I did with my hair. Now this piece in particular has some fold lines from the clay. Here you can see that. And if you don't like that, just put it back in the mold. And squish it some more. I mean, let's say you like the back better, you could flip it over and mash it again. But I'm pretty happy with that. To me, those crease lines just make it look more like a stone. Okay, the pink plasticky looking part notwithstanding. But <laughs> Alright, so let's slice off another bit.
Alright, I'm going to like this rectangular piece right here. Alright, I underfilled that one just a little bit, so. Alright, you see this one has quite a bit of texture. So I'm going to put it back in. See if I can get rid of some of that. But I see something I don't really care for. Let's see if I can show you where that dip goes in. It probably wouldn't show in the finished piece because um, I'd put a bezel around it. just for the sake of argument. See that right there is what causes it. Just a little pull back from the edge too much. Come on now. Alright. So there's two. Now we do one more. Um, let's do... Decisions, decisions. All right, we'll do that. Little 
teardrop shape. I found that holding it up in the air helps you fill in the little bits and pieces a little better. <laughs> and then you can set it down and flatten off the back a little bit. Okay, and there's another look. piece of darker glitter probably from when I put the black in there. It is important to uh, wipe out your mold in between with a bit of, a bit of alcohol or a baby wipe. Ah, so there those three are. A little Makumagani effect on some little gems. Alright. Okay. These are the nail art foils. And I just got on eBay and looked it up and relatively cheap depending on how many how many colors you get they usually come in little sets and I believe I got 24 in this particular set and some of them work and some of them don't I don't know what the difference is but I did have a green one that didn't work. Doesn't mean I give up on it though. Just using the rounded cap of my craft knife. Um, a paintbrush, um, just something rounded, alright, and then we're going to give it a quick jerk, jerk it off, and as you can see, the pretty foil stays behind, alright, and then I'm just going to take that, And I'm going to turn it over into this long rectangle mold. Just making sure that the foil area is going to go down into the well. All right. And then give it a little pressure. make sure it's down in there good now for one like this um, 
fold this foil back up real quick. I don't want it to get damaged. And as you can see, you get quite a bit of the foil. There used to be a product called Jones Tones that was made especially for polymer clay, but I really had a hard time. Um, everybody's waiting on a new supplier, so I'm not sure if they've quit making it or what the deal is. But I was not able to get my hands on any. Alright, and I just put all that away. You could backfill it with a different color, you could backfill it with just the plain white. I'm just going to backfill it with some scraps. Alright. It's not perfect on the back. It's not pretty on the back. But it doesn't have to be. And as I said, it doesn't turn out perfect. We've got a crack down here where the white shows through. A little bit of freckling up here where the white shows through. And if I would have done it with black, you would be able to see that even better. But I believe when you put it in a piece of jewelry with a bezel around it, it's going to be stunning. So, there's two of the different techniques that I used. Um, the makumegane and the foiling technique. Alright, and that's just two ways to play with, to play with these molds. Um, you can use the UV resin, regular resin. I don't happen to have any regular two-part resin. I haven't used it in four ever. I've been thinking about getting some just to uh, do some tutorials because more people have um, two-part resin than a UV resin. Alright. There is another brand of UV resin um, that is called mm -hmm, I don't know if it's called Envirotech Let me see. Yeah, it's just called... Ep 
epoxy jewelry. <laughs> It's a UV jewelry glaze. And for a two ounce bottle, which is about the size, you know, paint comes in a two ounce bottle. So for a two ounce bottle is like twelve fifty and free shipping. So I'll put a link to that um, down below, if I remember. <laughs> and that's for U.S. Um, shipping. They do do international shipping also, though. Alright. Okay. So I'll be back later and do um, some resin. Um, in the mold. Alright. I shall holler at y'all later. Bye now.